Questions 11 through 20 on the 2017 Grade 7 Goss Math Contest. The number that goes into the box to make 3 over 7 equals box over 63 two, true is. We'll call that x, so 3 over 7 is equal to x over 63. Cross multiply and you get 3 times 63 is equal to 7x, so therefore x is equal to 3 times 63 over 7. And when you do that math, you get 27 for the value of x. And therefore, number 11, the answer is A. At the Gaussian store, puzzles cost $10 each or $50 for a box of six puzzles. If a customer would like exactly 25 puzzles, what is the min maximum minimum possible cost? All right, so we've got uh, 25 puzzles that we need to get. Okay, I'm going to break them up into six, 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 and one. That allows me to take advantage of this $50 for a box of six because that tends to be a little cheaper, right? Because if you bought them individually, six would cost $60. So this is going to be $50. This is going to be $50 and so on. And then that individual one at the end will be $10. So now I just have to add up these guys, and when I do, I get 210. And that's the cheapest minimum possible cost. So number 12, the answer is A. When the shaded region, uh, shaded triangle shown is translated, which of the following triangles can be obtained? So translated, we're just moving either up or across or diagonally we're not flipping it in any way we're not reflecting it in it in any way so the shape has to uh, be retained it has to look like that because all we're doing is a translation so that's the key to the question just the interpretation of the question well which one of those looks exactly like that in terms of its shape position is not important just the shape well the only one that looks like that to me is D the rest have been rotated or flipped or, or, or reflected or something like that. And that's not what they want. They just want a translation. So the answer is D. Therefore, number 13 is D. When the time in Toronto, which is where I'm from, by the way, is 1 p.m. and the time in Gander, Newfoundland is 2.30, okay, a flight from Toronto to Gander takes 2 hours and 50 minutes. If the flight departs at 3 Toronto time, what time will the flight land in Gander? So it departs at 3 p.m. And then it takes 2 hours and 50 minutes. So in Toronto time, you will arrive in Gander 5.50. But to get Newfoundland time, we have to add what looks like an hour and 30 minutes. So add an hour and 30 minutes to 5.50, and that brings you at 7.20 p.m. Number 14, therefore, the answer is A. Five students ran a race. Ryan was faster than Henry in phase. Henry was slower than phase. Toma was fa faster than Ryan, but slower than Omar. Which student finished fourth? So Ryan is faster than Henry in phase. Phase Henry is uh, slower than Phase. Toma is faster than Ryan, but slower than Omar. Okay, now we got to combine all this. O is faster than Toma, who's faster than Ryan, who is faster than Phase, who's faster than Henry. So this is the combination of all the information. So this is obviously the winner. Second, third, fourth. So fourth is Phase. So number fifteen, the answer is A. A circular spinner is divided into 20 equal sections as shown. An arrow is attached to the center of the spinner. The arrow is spun once. What is the probability that the arrow stops in a section containing a number that is a divisor of 20? First, let's list what are the divisors of 20. 
20, 10, 5, 4, 2, and 1. So there's six divisors. And there's 20 numbers, right, in this circle. So the probability is these six over the total, which is 20. And that's it. So number 16, the answer is E. The mean of four integers, 78, 83, 82, and x is 80. Which one of the following statements is true? So 78 plus 83 plus 82 plus x divided by 4 is 80. So that means 243 plus x is equal to 320, and therefore x is 77. So x is obviously 3 less than the mean, which is 80. And that is choice D for number 17. Sarah goes to the bookstore and wants to buy a book that is originally priced at $100. Which of the following options gives her the best discount? Okay, let's calculate. A discount of 20, so you take 0.8 and multiply it by 100, and that's 80. A discount of 10%, so that'd be 0.9 times 100, which is 90. And then another discount of 10%, so you take that 90 and multiply it by 0.9, like that. And that would result in 81. So this is 81. Same thing for C, 15, so 0.85 times 100, and that gives me 85. And then a discount of 5%, so 0.95 times 85, and that gives me 80.75. And then the last one, discount of 5%, so 0.95 times 100, which is 95, and then 15% discount would be 0.85, and then times that 95, and that gives me 80.75. So, which one of these is the lowest? Is it um, 80, 81, 80.75, or 80.75? Well, obviously the lowest is 80. So the answer is A for number 18. Two sheets of 11 by 8 paper are placed on top of each other, forming an overlapping 8 by 8 square in the center as shown. The area of the rectangle WXYZ is. So 11 by 8. So this is 8 and this is 8. And then they're saying that the square is also 8. This, this is going to be 8, and this is 8, this is 8, and this is 8 from there to there. So since it was an 11 uh, by 8, that means this has got to be 3. And that distance also has to be 3 since that represents part of the other piece of paper. So the dimensions of this look like 8 times 3 plus 8 plus 3, which is 14. And therefore, the area would be 8 times 14. And 8 times 14 is 112. So number 19, the answer is B. Betty and Anne are walking around a rectangular park with dimensions 600 by 400, as shown. They walk, they both begin at the top left corner of the park and walk at a constant but different speed. Betty walks in a clockwise direction and Anne walks in a counterclockwise direction. Points P, Q, R, S, T divide the bottom edge of the park into six segments of equal length. When Betty and Anne Meet for the first time, they are between Q and R. Which of the following could be the ratio of Betty's speed to Anne's speed? So Q and R is right here. Now, I don't know where they are, but they're going to meet somewhere in between. I don't know, not necessarily exactly in between, but somewhere. Okay, let's just, let's get a sort of a basic feel for this. Let's say they do meet exactly in between. So that would mean Anne has traveled the following. First, she goes 400 meters from there to there. And then if this is uh, divided evenly, each of those segments is 100. So this would be 100, 100. And let's just say they meet halfway between Q and R, so another 50. So plus 250. So and we are approximating travel 650. 
And then Betty, she is first going from here to here, which is 600. And then, of course, she's going down like that. And then she's going to go across. So 100, 200, 300, and then 350. So 350. So her total is 1350. So now let's get an approximate of what this ratio could be. These represent distances. Our formula of speed is equal to distance over time. And then time would be, of course, distance over speed. When they meet, the amount of time that has elapsed is the same. So the time that Anne has traveled is the same as the time that Betty has traveled. Then we can use this formula. So TA would be DA over SA, which is DB over SB. DA I have approximated as 650, and DB I have come to a number three, 1350. So now, if I want to get SB, Betty speed over SA, it would just be 1350 over 650. And that is approximately 2.1. Okay, so which one of these is close to 2.1? closest to 2.1? The answer to that, if you get out a calculator, say 5 divided by 3, 9 divided by 4, and so on, you'll find that the one that's closest to 2.1, which is what I got, is this one, 9 over 4. But it's not equal to 2.1. 9 over 4 is actually equal to 2.25. Okay, now you can say, okay, I'll take a chance and let's just circle it and move on. Or you can get a 100% uh, conclusion and that is as follows instead of putting this line right down the middle I'm gonna say that between Q and R it is some distance I'm not really sure exactly but we are arriving somewhere let's say point X that is where they meet so that means I'm just gonna say if this is the meeting point from here to here is x and therefore this is 50 minus x like that actually it would be a hundred minus x because the distance from here to here is a hundred so it would be a hundred minus x sorry about that so that's basically the new uh, breakup so you do the exact same thing as before when you calculate the values for Ann and Betty and would be 400 plus 200 plus x this time, so that's 600 plus x. And then Betty, her calculation would be pretty much the same except for that x, 600 plus 400 plus 300 plus 100 minus x. So that actually comes out to uh, 1400 minus x. So now, let's figure out that ratio. SB over SA, this guy right here. Now that would pretty much be 1400 minus X over 600 plus X. And let's see if this 9 over 4 actually gives us a value of X that makes sense. Cross multiply and you get 5, um, 400 zero zero plus 9X. And that other side would be 5600 zero, zero minus 4x. So that means 13x is equal to 200. And therefore, x is equal to 15.4. That makes sense. So basically, it's 15.4. And then on the other side, it would be whatever. whatever that's about 84.6. So it makes perfect sense. And when they meet at that exact point, the ratio will indeed be 9 over 4. So... We've proven it, and therefore number 20, the answer is B.